Yes, he's just gotten home. Oh, well, there they come. So I need to call. Yep, you call them. I'll we'll call church. Bye. Bye. I'm still getting the printout. <laughs> <clears throat> Hi, everybody. On this fifth, fourth Sunday after Easter, uh, as well as Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the mothers among us. And thank you for all you do in so many different ways. Whether you are here as a visitor or here in the uh, sanctuary, in our parking lot, or on Zoom, Again, welcome. It is a blessing to be together as God's people. Are there any congregational announcements this morning? Yes. Hello, I'm Mary Doherty, and I'm Council Person of the Month. And I noticed there aren't a lot of sign-ups for communion and coffee hour. Um, so... If everyone would be so kind as to fill in the blanks, thank you. Very good. Other announcements? Very good. A couple of prayer updates. Uh, we continue to um, keep Susie in our prayers for uh, continued health and as she continues through some uh, procedures. Uh, Erwin Zimmerman is home after, I believe it was uh, mid-January that uh, he ended up in the hospital and then uh, rehab after that. So uh, prayers of thanksgiving for uh, Erwin and Crystal being together again. And Lillian sends her thanks and appreciation for uh, all the prayers supporting her this past week after her car was totaled uh, uh, just a week ago. Um, so Thanksgiving, that she was banged up and bruised, uh, both emotionally and physical, physically, but otherwise uh, very safe, thanks to God's grace. And then finally, I before we get ourselves ready, I just need to share my own personal thanks. When uh, Rebecca and I came in to uh, get ready this morning, I, there was a gift waiting for me in my office. You all are so generous and not only kind and loving, but also with a wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> if you can't make that out, that says the Sermonator. <laughs> so thank you. It is a joy to be here with you. Let us take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship.
Now those who are able, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is a feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. Let's join together in prayer. God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good, that we may do your will and work among us in all pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Our first reading is from Acts chapter 9, beginning at the 36th verse. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek means Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At the time she became ill and died, and then they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with a request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the windows stood beside, widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up, then called the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Let's sing respond. Say responsibly the psalm when I can find it. Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Time for our children's message for all ages. So, so what is what are the two things that are special about today? Mother's Day, very good. And the other may be a little harder to, to remember, but today, if you listen to our music and our scriptures, it's Good Shepherd Sunday. So why do we call or recognize Jesus as our Good Shepherd? Any thoughts about that? Well, among other things, a shepherd is the one that prepares and takes care of the sheep. And for much of history, the shepherd lived with the sheep and experienced the same weather and, and uh, all of the challenges of life that the sheep did. In fact, I, as I've shared with some of you, uh, I had the privilege of living on a sheep farm for several weeks as part of my seminary training. It was quite interesting. 
And I can tell you that those the, the husband and wife who were the, the shepherds knew those sheep very, very well. And the sheep did, in fact, know them. So we refer to Jesus as the good shepherd because he provides for us. And sometimes that comes through prayer, through confidence, through inner peace, and things like that. But a lot of times as human beings, we need more than just a sense, even if it's a powerful sense inside us. We need hands, arms to hold us, and people to remind us that we are loved. We need Jesus, yes, but very often Jesus comes to us in human form or embodied. And of course, one of the, hopefully, one of the uh, greatest providers for all of us have been our mothers. And so very often Jesus comes to us through our mothers and fathers and grandparents and aunts and uncles and one another here in, at St. Andrew. So, so today we give thanks for mothers and we give thanks for Jesus as our good shepherd who always provides. Amen. Our second reading is from Revelation chapter 7, beginning at the ninth verse. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have, been, have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worshiped him day and night within his temple. And the one is seated on the throne with, uh, will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not sh strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away their tears from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Gospel reading for this fourth Sunday of Easter comes from the 10th chapter of John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple on the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. 
Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace be with you through the power of the Holy Spirit, from God our Father and from our newly risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In our reading from Revelation today, we hear, Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. Sounds like something from Steven Spielberg in one of the Star Wars episodes, doesn't it? A story of valiant warriors who opposed the corrupt military forces continued to fight through all of the dark and troubled times and who now, against all odds, know peace and prosperity. Thanks to the movie industry, we could easily picture starships and space cruisers, flashing lightsabers and phase cannons, all set against dark space and perhaps newly discovered planets. Instead, I need to share with you that these words in Revelation are both far less dramatic but also far more meaningful for us as Christians. These words from Revelation are part of John's vision of what the future does hold for the people of God, they who have come out of the great ordeal. Although a corrupt and brutal government was part of the lives of John and his people, a greater part was simply the difficulty of life itself, daily life, right here on planet Earth. Well, I said it was less dramatic. No Star Wars or interplanetary travel. In jo instead, John reminds us of the future that God has won for us through Jesus Christ on the cross. Your and my lives might not have the drama of Luke Skywalker battling against Darth Vader, but instead you and I face the joy and heartache of trying to raise children with a sense of integrity and self-respect in a troubled and dangerous world. We can fantasize about valiant stands against a government that has allied itself with the dark side, but most of the time we struggle with a government that, at best, doesn't have the money to meet the needs of our communities, and at worst is so big and filled with bureaucracy that often it doesn't seem to care. Our lives are not the stuff of movies and television, but make no mistake about it, our lives are far more complicated than Obi-Wan Kenobi ever imagined. 
future that John holds for us. The vision that God gave him is not for characters in a movie. It is for us, the people of God, who do our best to meet and overcome the daily needs of life. God has won for us a future where struggles are ended, where joys are completed, where barriers between men and women, races and cultures have been removed. And God's people are united in peace and joy. Pastor Jim Nestigan, a now long retired, was a professor at Luther Seminary in Minneapolis for many years. Now, as while I graduated from Gettysburg Seminary, I was blessed to connect with Jim several times over the years. Now, one of these gatherings, he shared how for much of his life, he believed that those saints who have gone before us are loved ones who have died and are alive with Christ could not possibly know what was going on in our lives here on earth. Because if they did know, Nestigan believed, heaven would be so weighed down with tears in the knowledge of our struggles, that it could not be heaven. Well, one day as he was sharing this understanding, another pastor told him, no, he was wrong, totally and completely wrong. Those in heaven know everything about us, this pastor told him, every bit. Yes, the struggles we are going through now, the mistakes we make, the injury we cause ourselves and others. But they also know the full glory of the future that Christ has won for us. And because our loved ones in heaven know the glory prepared for us by God, far from being crushed by sadness on our behalf, our loved ones celebrate and rejoice in the eternity and completeness of God's victory for us. You and I, the faithful people of God, are the ones who have come out of the great ordeal. It will be us, by God's grace, who have withstood corruption and misery, pain and struggle, faithlessness and despair, not perfectly. And so we confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness. And that is also part of John's vision and God's promise. Those who have come through the great ordeal, those multitudes with whom we will jo join, <coughs> gain their white robes not through our strength and perfection, but through the blood of the Lamb, through God's power, in our lives. John's vision is of that time when God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Do you know that promise is stated three times in Scripture? Twice in Revelation, we will hear it again next Sunday, and once in Isaiah. God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Can you imagine, 
excuse me. Can you imagine <clears throat> a world without tears? I don't think I can. I can imagine joy, peace, prosperity, health. I have experienced those things to some degree. But a world without tears? Beyond my imagination. But then I don't have to imagine it because God has promised it and won that for us. By God's power and grace, there will come a time when you and I and all humanity will no longer know hunger, fear, grief. When the sun will never again scorch us and Christ, our good shepherd, will guide us to springs of eternal life. Well, I started with Star Wars, but let me highlight a different space movie, a favorite of Rebecca and I, and in fact, one that was up this week, Apollo 13. The story of Jim Lovell, John Swigert, and Fred Hayes. An exciting, dramatic movie, even if it didn't have lightsabers and warp speed. How many have seen this movie? Okay, I think most of us. Now, does anybody remember the names Charles Conrad, Richard Gordon, or Alan Bean? Okay. A few very good bonus points. They also did amazing and courageous work. They were the astronauts of Apollo 12. I don't know about you, but I am not holding my breath waiting for a movie about Apollo 12 to come out. Yet the people who worked on Apollo 12. Both those on the ground and those who flew into space were valiant, dedicated, hardworking, sometimes flawed people who will never be memorialized in a movie. My question to you is, of which space, space launch would you rather have been part? Most of us will never have our lives made into movies. One of the great joys and privileges I have as your pastor is to see the courage and the strength with which you face the struggles of daily life. Of your joy, which often exists even in the midst of great difficulty. God knows your struggles and your joys, and God is with you in every one of them. Whether you know it or not, whether you feel it or not, in any particular moment, God has promised to provide all that you need and more now and every day of your life so that you will be one of the multitude, the people of God who have come victoriously out of the great ordeal. That is the good news of this Easter Sunday. Amen.
For those who are able, please rise. Let us together proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and living the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from the captivity to sin and death, we pray to God for resurrection of the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy. Warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy. Seek out those who weep while they wait healing and consolation. Set people in their path who can provide and care for their need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. We lift before you particular situations or people aloud, silently, or by chat. God, in your mercy, inspire the words of your prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch out our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, God of all nations, we lift before you the people of Ukraine. We ask your power at work for those whose lives are being torn apart, both those under assault and those being forced into violence beyond their nature. Guide the leaders of all nations with wisdom and compassion may reign. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Enfold us in great multitudes of saints from every nation from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O oh God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I share a sign of God's peace with one another.
peace, everyone. Much peace. <laughs> peace. We continue with the offering. Those who are able, please rise. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your as peaceable rain, and you welcome us all to your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending proclamation. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you send in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb, he there took on our nature and our lot, and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will, and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant and to show forth the resurrection. Taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and serve as your priestly people. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come.
those in their parking lot and on Zoom, receive the body and blood of Christ, broken and shed for you. Amen. Receive the body of Christ, broken for you. Receive the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Those who are able, please rise. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God. For this bread and cup, we have tasted the new heaven and earth. We're fed and thirst. We will be fed and thirst no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know the life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Christ is risen. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thank you.